Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and on today's video, we're taking a bit of a diagnostic tour looking at why your system is booting but not displaying an actual image on the screen. Keep watching to find out more. Okay, so in today's video, this is something of a kind of roundup of some of the things which we've actually had occur on our Discord channel for. Um, seems to be getting more and more regular. So I figured I'll make a quick video so that people can kind of go through some of these steps and actually avoid me having to type it all out or perhaps save them going through the pain and anguish of not having their system boot as it should do. So this is gonna be for people that have built their system, possibly a new system or possibly you're doing an upgraded graphics card, that sort of thing. Your system appears to have booted. So if you've got diagnostic LEDs on your motherboard, such as like this MSI one, so it's gone past the CPU and the RAM and the VGA, and it's stuck on the boot light. Now, in theory, it means that everything is okay, and there should, in fact, be an image being displayed on your monitor, probably gonna be the first BIOS screen, so you can go and do your setups before you start installing Windows. Now, obviously, if this isn't a brand new build, you may not get this, you may just get it go so that the LEDs turn off altogether, the system thinks everything is great and gravy, and your system is booted up, and potentially you will hear your fans either ramp up or ramp down, according to how you've set them up actually in your system or in the BIOS. So this is basically, your system's working, it isn't a CPU error, it isn't a RAM error, it isn't a VGA error, it is a boot error, so you're not getting a display. Now generally this is gonna become down to a very simple thing. And essentially it boils down to either your HDMI cable, like this one, or your DisplayPort cable. Now the first thing I would suggest trying is a very simple one, and that is actually going to the back of your computer, if I spin this around and show you, you can see where your graphics card fits into the computer, and generally, for most cases, you're gonna have these metal strips which go across and actually cover up the individual slots. Now, with dual slot cards, what can quite often happen is the fact that when you plug in your HDMI cable, because these metal slots here actually protrude slightly, when you plug in your HDMI, depending on the angle of the card, if it's up a little bit higher here, you can see it could quite easily interfere. The plastic around your HDMI cable can actually touch on the metal. So therefore, the HDMI cable is not going fully into your graphics card. Now, a really simple way of actually seeing if this is the case on your particular video card, and this applies for DisplayPort and HDMI users, is literally do what I've done, that is remove all the bracketry around the outside edge, loosen off the screws for the graphics card, don't remove them entirely, because you do want your card to be supported somewhat, but just so you've got a little bit of wiggle room. So if I remove the HDMI there, you can see we've got a little bit of wiggle room. So just by letting the card sag down very slightly, it gives you a little bit more room at the top there. So you can plug in your HDMI cable and you should find there is like a reassuring click when it goes in and the same for display port. Something else to look out for as well, look at the actual bar and see if the HDMI is actually physically touching that metal bar. If it's touching that before it goes all the way in, that could definitely be a problem. So hopefully just doing that, loosen off the screws and gently moving your card around, allowing the connection of your HDMI or display port to go all the way in should have fixed your problem. Now, if it hasn't, there's other things we can try. One of the more common things we're seeing recently is the fact that some monitors, especially some of the older ones, just don't like the display output from modern graphics cards. If your monitor is more than a few years old, potentially it may not support the standards that is actually trying to be pumped out, especially in the BIOS because the BIOS is a very different kind of resolution and setup so you may not see that and often some graphics cards you try to get into the BIOS by pressing delete and it'll just bypass that altogether and go straight into Windows because you physically can't display it. So in that instance what I would suggest doing is first of all if you have got them available try a different HDMI or DisplayPort cable. Some of the older original ones don't have the actual signaling in the cables or they're cheap cables maybe they're broken or broken down slightly or just don't quite have the um, integrity to display a signal. So changing out an HDMI cable or DisplayPort cable is a quite an easy thing to do. Something which isn't quite as easy to do is the uh, probably one of the most upheaval things you can possibly do, and that is to try another monitor. Now, if you're lucky and you're in maybe an office environment or you've got siblings or whatever, there's additional monitors in the house, then I would certainly suggest trying a different monitor just to see if you can get a display. If you can, then Generally, what I would suggest to do is most houses that have got a PC have also got a television, and it's a pretty strong chance that your television will have an HDMI input, 
So if you can, either get your TV near your computer or take your computer down into the living room or wherever your TV is, try plugging it in, and there's a very strong chance that you will actually get a display. At that point then, you'll know that whether or not it is your monitor or whatever is causing the problem. And generally, that will cure most things. Now, often also, what you can find is possibly there may be a fault with your graphics card. It's not entirely unheard of. If you do have a motherboard which has onboard graphics, which if you're on the latest Intel or AM5 platforms, you'll find that most of them do. In that case, unplug your HDMI or DisplayPort from your graphics card and plug it in to these top connectors. So most motherboards have got two. If you wanted to, you could remove your graphics card in its entirety, just to take that out of the equation in case the system is still trying to boot to that. Again, that is down to you, your choice entirely. Realistically, I would say if you're not getting a display, probably it is best to take the graphics card out in its entirety and use these ports on the back. Now, if you've got a processor which doesn't have integrated graphics, sadly, you're still not gonna get a display on there. So do bear that in mind. If you're not sure, please do reach out to us on our Discord and we'll try and go through it with you in greater depth. So potentially other things you could try, it's gonna be unlikely, but potentially it might be worth a try. And that is if you uh, go to the computer, if you've got two sticks of RAM and you're still getting problems, potentially it could be a RAM issue. So you could just actually remove one of the sticks. This is gonna be more for motherboards that are getting stuck on the DRAM LED, possibly the CPU one as well. And of course, another thing you can try is to reset your CMOS. We've done videos on that before, which I'll link below, but essentially you'll find there's a little battery on your motherboard. Just remove that, short out the CMOS pins and reset the motherboard back to its defaults. So that is uh, pretty much it for very basic troubleshooting. Obviously there could be an absolute plethora of things which could go wrong. So if you're not entirely sure, please feel free to join our Discord and hop into one of the tech support channels and we'll try and help you out as best we can. But hopefully this is something of a primer. So if you are getting those initial problems, if these kind of simple things don't help you, then you might need more help. So hopefully this video has been useful to you. If it has, smash the like button. If you want to see more content like this on a daily basis, then hit subscribe and the chime notification and you'll be notified of future video releases. But for now, I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.